Good afternoon, everybody. It is my pleasure uh, to uh, move the discussion uh, now from the envelope, which we have uh, heard uh, so far, into the content of that uh, uh, envelope. And uh, uh, I think that uh, the presentation uh, should uh, go on. That's not my name out of there. Maybe the organizer can uh, help me with, uh, with that. Excellent, yes. That is uh, a part of the presentation, uh, perfect. So the uh, association uh, that I represent, uh, it is uh, representing uh, the home appliance industry in uh, Europe. The home appliance industry means the industry that is manufacturing uh, small domestic appliances, uh, large domestic appliances, uh, who is manufacturing uh, home comfort appliances. And uh, it is extremely likely that uh, all of you uh, have in your home one or more products coming uh, from uh, the members uh, of the association. And we also have uh, a very extensive network of national associations which enables us to follow the policy developments. Uh, the uh, home appliance industry is a relevant industrial actor in the European economy. I cannot uh, uh, boast uh, the same uh, numbers that uh, uh, Eugenio has just uh, shown because we are representing uh, 200,000 direct employees and for each direct employees there are three other employees that are depending on those jobs. So we end up representing something uh, like uh, 900,000 employees in, uh, in Europe. And that is the number that I would like to use to give you a size of, uh, of this sector. Now, let, let me come uh, to the heart of the discussion. Uh, the title of the conference over there speaks about circular economy. My uh, thesis today uh, that I would like to demonstrate with you, it is that actually we do not need only a circular economy, but we need more of a circular society because the challenges that we have in front of us are for sure economical challenges, for sure all of them, they must make economic sense, but as far as our products are concerned, it doesn't qualify only as a, a a circular economy issue. It's more of a societal economy issue, and I will uh, show you why. As far as our sector, first of all, we started by assessing, but how good are we in this circular economy world? So we wanted to check our own uh, logbook, and we started a discovery uh, trip where we wanted to understand uh, how good are we in the manufacturing phase in the use phase and in the recycling phase. So we wanted to go through the entire circle and understand uh, how good are we and where are the gaps actually. In the production processes, uh, we have been uh, uh, developing a lot in terms of uh, waste generated uh, during the manufacturing phase in terms of water and energy generation. But it's also important uh, to understand uh, that uh, actually appliances uh, since the outset, uh, since the uh, washing machine uh, that you have seen, uh, which is a wooden barrel, has been instrumental in helping us manage better our life in terms of reducing time that we need to dedicate to the usual uh, chores, in terms of uh, using energy, in terms of using water. And uh, let me make you uh, a couple of examples. Uh, a dishwasher, is not the most uh, innovative product that you could think of. But when you compare the act of cleaning dishes by hand with using a, a dishwasher, we came out with the outstanding result that to clean the same amount of dishes, we would use cleaning dishes by hand 110 liters. While using a dishwasher for the same dishes, it's only 10 liters. If you scale that 80% overall saving uh, into water at the European level, and if all Europeans had a dishwasher, which is not the case today, 
Today, the average penetration of dishwashers is around 45% in Europe. Some countries, like Romania, is 3%. So three families out of 100 do have a dishwasher. If we could go to 100%, we would save annually 2.5 million Olympic-sized swimming pools. As far as water, as far as energy, we would save 63% uh, on each and every wash cycle. If we scale up to the European dimension, if all Europeans had a dishwasher, that would be the equivalent of saving two times the energy used by Portugal every year. So that is a, a, a clear improvement with respect to the circularity that is important uh, uh, for the society as a whole, but it's not going to happen only because one part of the economy, which is the home appliance industry, is putting dishwashers for sale. No, that's not enough. It's one piece, one important piece, but that's not the end game. Then we said, let's assess the uh, uh, material flow of our sector. Let's see how much do we take from nature every year and how much we uh, gave it back. Um, and being uh, this, I mean, uh, a conference organized by, by, by Steel, so you can, you can check that uh, uh, we are, as a sector in Europe, using 2.8 million tons of steel, the year of reference is 2016, in order to place all our products uh, on the market. Then, then it's copper, it's glass, it's stainless steel, it's plastic, it's aluminium, it's concrete. But the biggest part of our products is actually steel. If you want to have a better insight into what is it into large domestic appliances or small domestic appliances, you can have a look. You will notice that uh, large domestic appliances uh, are dominated by steel, while small domestic appliances, you have the plastic which is, which is growing, the amount of plastic. Uh, what I would like you uh, to go on with, it is this, this picture in mind, because this is the best visualization we could have of how today the sector is circular. So I'm not telling you uh, something that we are gonna do in the future. No, I'm telling you what is happening today. The year of reference here is 2016. And uh, out of the six million ton, which is the materials we got in order to place on the market the 250 uh, million products that uh, the sector sells every year, those six million ton have been used to grow the 67 million tons, which is this tall stock. And that is actually the urban mines as far as we are concerned. That is where all the material, the steel, the copper, the aluminium that you have seen uh, earlier is actually stored. Out of that, five million tons are generated, is the we that is actually generated. We, sorry, I'm using an acronym. We is waste from electric and electronic equipment. So it's a waste that is coming out of the products that uh, the members of my associations are placing on the market. Five million tons are uh, the uh, waste uh, generated. Out of that, we know only what happens to four, and that gap is already a first, uh, a first problem. Out of those four, three and a half million tons are the amount of materials that are recovered as secondary raw material. Tell me if that is or is it not a very good example of a circularity in the economy that is happening today. Not everything works well because as, uh, uh, as I've shown, out of five million tons, only four are actually uh, accounted for, but not all of four are traced. Not all of four million tons, we know how they are actually dismantled because uh, we have seen a very a very beautiful picture of a building going up and the building being dismantled the uh, demanufacturing is an industry 
the handling uh, of the waste of electric and electronic equipment is an industry that has to adhere to safety and environmental standards. This is what we stand for. What we know of today, if you look uh, at the waste bin, uh, which is the summary of, of the chart, 44% are blank, which means that we do not know how they are environmentally becoming secondary raw material. That is a very big gap, which we cannot solve as an economic actor. To address that very issue, which is a societal challenge, we need member states to do market surveillance, we need police force to trace all the weed that is going everywhere in the world. This is the outcome of a project which was tracing, uh, uh, placing uh, like uh, RFID uh, uh, devices into waste uh, and using the same uh, technology that is used to trace uh, uh, drug, uh, drug uh, trafficking. They wanted to check where actually we, so waste from electronic and electric equipment, ends up. And you have the answer on screen. So this is a societal ch challenge. Uh, there is something also for us as consumers, because uh, if I go into small domestic appliances, uh, uh, shavers, uh, kettles, uh, we need to have uh, the cooperation of the entire value chain. And in particular, it's important to know what is it into each product. And there we started, and we have already available a one-stop shop for recyclers, where our members are sharing a technical data sheet per each product by telling what is in it that has to be uh, tackled or dealt with with care. We have also voluntarily started uh, Code of Conduct. An example is the labeling of products that are containing uh, fluorinated gas or vacuum insulation panels. Why? Because they have to be dismantled with specific technologies. The role of standard, I've already uh, shared with you how important it is that we have and we use the proper level of environmental standards in order to disassemble products. And the role of consumers is also extremely important because if we want to have overall a circular society, there is a role for each of us. Me, as a consumer, I have to take care that all these small domestic appliances do not end up in the waste bin, but they are brought into the proper collection and uh, recycling uh, uh, consortium. Thank you for your attention.